Portrait <laughs> Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 5, Episode 1. You can find these on YouTube. Go to YouTube and search for Landscape Artist of the Year, the season, and the episode, and you will get some choices. So let's get started. And remember, this is a recap, so if you want to watch the whole episode again, go to YouTube and you can find them there. These are not on Prime Video. Now let's take a look at our artists for today. Here's our first one up. This, I believe, could be a watercolor, or it's a, yeah, I think it is, or a very, yeah, I'm going to go with watercolor on this one. Um, it's a little bit confusing. Oh, well, let's not even talk about the art yet. Let's, let's look at the format. The format is the artist submit a landscape to be on the program, and then, um, which they have unlimited time to do. There's, a, wow, look at all the lines in there. That's, that's kind of interesting. Um, and so the judges then select from, I think they submit two landscapes. Remember, they have unlimited time for these landscapes. And landscape, of course, also includes urbanscape, which is what we have here. This is very reminiscent of Edward Hopper, don't you think? It's quite complex. Let's look at it a little bit closer. Whoa, wow, that's, that's an amazing job. There's a lot to consider there. And... Have, choosing that light, that light palette where the light is happening is just so beautiful against the, those dark tones, those purples and blues on all that yellow inside. Oh, that's very effective. I really enjoy this painter a lot. It's, it's descriptive, but it's also just so well designed. It's, I just think there's something really exciting about his use of form and space, and there's depth there and a vagueness. I have to admit, I well, I like it all. I, lo I love detail, but then I also like vagueness as well. But, but I'm always looking at the design and the architecture underneath a painting, and there's a lot going on here. This is so very well designed. Oh, just beautiful. And such a good use of complementary colors, you know, green against red. Here's our next artist, and she's chosen one part of a very urban structure. And then, I think we get to see in the next close-up, there is a little bit of landscape underneath. Uh, it's hard to see in that, that spot, but she'll use that same device today as well. So we'll get another chance to see what she does. Um, it's very bold and very graphic. Here's the next, the next one coming up is a print and I'm never sure how to, how you um, sort of, how, how is a judge, I'm not a judge, of course, I'm just commenting, when you have a print compared to painting. So you have to kind of adjust to, okay, black and white, monochromatic. And this is, of course, a very close-up of grasses, which is also a landscape. I do wish they would have a still life program as well, though. That's a whole genre of painting that I think is kind of overlooked in a way. Um, so let's go on to the next painter. Oh, of course. I love this kind of painting. Uh, if you've watched my channel for any period of time, you know why I love this kind of painting. Uh, I love, I love uh, form, and I love, um, you know, the hint, uh, 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 the hint of light. It just, it's just lit from within. And of course, there is a direct line where the sun would be coming from, a direct source of light. But those lost and found edges are just so very beautiful. And it identifies itself as a painting, which is, I love when a painting does that. And that's very different from a photograph. Let's see our next one up. This person works very panoramically. So her submission is very long and thin. And what she does today will be as well, which I just think is, just blows me away. I cannot imagine doing that. I'm so used to the format of, I tend to paint in a square, so I kind of see things in a square. Um, but she sees a bigger, broader thing than I do. I, I really, really like this. Um, she's not a colorist. And by that, I mean we have no color value substitutes in here, no swap outs. But it's very effective and, and certainly a good use of distance. Not this one. Oh, I love this one. Yeah, this is a, a scene from, from a city in Peru, I guess. Uh, there, it's really complex, but it also is has some really simple design behind it. I, I just, 
it, it, this just it just blows me away. Look at that. Oh, gosh. So let we'll see what he does today. Wow, and that, that yellow building right in the front. If you put your thumb over that yellow building, you can see how important it is. That is super important to the whole painting. Sometimes something is the anchoring element. And, and yeah, the painter knows it, but as a viewer, you don't know it yet. All right, we are at Tynesdale, Tyneside Bridge. And the artists are going to have four hours all together. They have two hours to paint and then two hours... Uh, and then one hour for lunch, and then two more hours to paint. Here is the setting, which is known for this very iconic uh, lighthouse. So that's a design element that is going to be a problem. And as a painter, I've had this problem many, many times because you might have this kind of element in a landscape, and you've got to do something with it because if you because you got to balance that very strong vertical. With your horizontal. See, it's happening with uh, one of the judges in this picture. It just, I mean, it dominates because of how vertical it is and how flat everything else is. Um, in comparison, I mean, horizontal, but also the stripes. Oh my gosh, it just, you know, it screams, pay attention to me. And so you got to do something about that. Here are the pods that they work in, which gives them some shelter from the wind and from the rain. Um, I think these little pods are adorable. I want one in my backyard. I wonder if you can get them. I'm being silly, but I just think they're cool. All right, the judging begins. Now, the judges are going to pick three of these people to go forward to the semifinals of this episode, but only one will go forward to the semifinals of the season, and this is season five. So here's the first one up. It's, um, it's not generous with its application of paint. It's kind of scratchy in a way. See, there it is. But that's this person's style, and they let the lighthouse dominate. And that's that's interesting to me. I think if it was a commission, um, it w that would be pretty important, but, uh, but it wouldn't be my choice. And of course, in order to incorporate that, you have to pick a format that's going to be taller that, rather than it is wider. So here we get a chance to see the scale of it. He and... <laughs> Here's the next painter up. He showed up in the chef's apron and the hat and the whole thing. What a character. I just, I appreciate his commitment <laughs> because I think of, I, I do think of painting very similarly to cooking. So this was the person that had that more diffuse style that I like so much. And I like this one too. And I, I, uh, from my own experience, I know when I have a tall, thin thing like that, and I live in Vermont, so there are a lot of churches, and they'll have a, a tall spire on it, and um, it's, I've discovered over time it's really important to cut that spire off in your composition. Here's the next painting up. Uh, this looks a lot like, I know it's not, um, there's some, there's a paper that's very slippery for watercolorists. And whenever I use it, I end up with this result, which I, which I don't, I don't like this kind of very watery, uh, look. Um, it's, but it's so, uh, slick that it's like painting, painting on a pane of glass. But, but this is a canvas. I just think she waters down her acrylic a lot. It's lovely to see the brush strokes going on there. Um, and that, that's a good example of balancing the, the, uh, vertical against the horizontal and then you've got to have diagonals in there you've got to create some diagonals whether they're there or not otherwise you're not going to go back into space so she does a good job of that and even put the pod in and she's the one that had the bridge at the as her um that structural bridge so it looks like her thing is kind of always to include a man-made structure maybe uh, along with what she's going to produce as a landscape painter. That's, that's really very beautiful, and the colors are beautiful. But it feels kind of, eh, I don't know, unfinished for me. Something about, oh my gosh. All right, this was, I felt like this one was a tell, because I, I love this. Obviously, this is the woman that does uh, the panoramic painting. Oh, actually, no, it's not. Um, but we'll get back to that. There are two people that do this long, thin format. Here's a detail from the same painting. I think it was really smart to cut that lighthouse off and put the emphasis on the landscape. It just shows what a good painter this person is. Those spots of red throughout. Oh my gosh. I pretty much adore this painting. Anyway, the reason I said it was a tell was because in the um, 
program, they show a lot of pictures of this entry. And to me, that's always a tell about who's going to win the episode. I have been wrong before, <laughs> but <laughs> hashtag Joe was always wrong. But, um, but in this case, I might be right. And now here's our next artist up who did the same thing, cut off that lighthouse in order to put all the attention on the landscape. This is beautifully done. I just, it doesn't have the same vibrancy of color that the one did before. And I should say probably what they're doing here is matching what they, a lot of what they saw that day. It was a very overcast day. So if you were gonna have a real lightness and brightness like we did in the previous painter, you have to uh, push your color because that's not what was being seen. And this is, yeah, this is way more accurate to what the day was. Uh, you know, and um, you can decide whether the artist should interpret the way they want the world to look on that day or whether indeed they want to uh, match what, what's in front of them. This is the person who had that kind of wild line thing going on. Here's a close-up. Um, it's, it's interesting. The judges were certainly intrigued by all the lines and seemed to feel they, they were quite expressive and uh, important to the painting. I, I'm, I'm not sure that I agree with that. I find it a little, um, well, I guess it's someone's signature style. So there it is. This one is a much more, oh, I don't know, what you would say like conventional picture of the place. And obviously, in order to get this view, the man, this person had, you know, it's a drone view, um, which would have had to be invented because you're, this is not where they were situated and not, not what they would have seen. So that's interesting to me. Um, I, there's some unresolved things for me in this painting. Those, that domey shape happening there in the middle and whatever that thing is on the right and I shouldn't be distracted by that, but I wish it was incorporated more in the landscape. And I really wish that the lighthouse went off the top. I, yeah, you know what? I would, I'm, I'm putting my hands up now in front of the screen and cropped. This would be a, there, there are different ways to crop this painting that would make it a more dynamic composition and design. Now, I think we have one more painter to, oh, here we go, close up. Ah, uh, yeah, it's, um, well, I'm, I'm just going to talk about this way I would about my own work. I'm not sing, singling this person out. But for me, when you come in close, this is a pretty dead area. There's not a lot going on. Um, you don't need a lot going on, but um, some color spots of value would just pick that up a little bit more. Yeah, that, that would make a difference. All right, the last one is, a, I believe, our printmaker. She worked in a round format, and we've seen artists do that before on the program. It's a lovely device. I think it was a smart way to incorporate the lighthouse element as well. Um, I, I just really admire it because you have to, you know, you have to be able to draw and you have to be able to, uh, boy, would you have to work fast. Oh, I mean, four hours is such a small amount of time. Wow. Can you imagine how much your hand would ache after this? I think it's a linoleum print, so they're using a carving tool. And of course, the big thing about something like this is you, you don't get to the, the reveal until you print the thing out. So um, no adjustments to be made. Uh, I, whereas in painting, you know, you're making constant decisions and constant adjustments all the time. So it's, a, it's just a different mindset. Well, now we're going to get to uh, the judging, the final judging. Final judging, the judges are going to pick three people to go forward, as I said before, and, um, and then we'll have... Uh, you know, in the end, we'll have a semi-final episode with, I believe, eight artists in it. So here they are all lined up in front of their paintings of the day. And it's been an incredibly long day. And you can see it's cold. Look at, they're wearing coats. That means your hands are cold, your feet are cold. It's really hard to work in those conditions. First one up, this is our first semi-finalist for the day, is the printmaker. And we talked about this a little bit. Um, remember, the judges are always looking for something different. They don't want to see the same paintings or styles over and over and over again, and they want variety. And so I think that might be why they chose this one. Now, the final commission is going to be a painting that's commissioned in the city of uh, Venice. And um, 
So remember, we don't know what the criterion, here's the, the second semifinalist for the day, but we don't know what the criterion of the commission is because that's going to be a gallery commission of some kind. But the judges know that. But that's going to play into the um, whoever wins this competition. And in this competition, the winners are extremely controversial, much more controversial than they were in Portrait Artist of the Year. And so that's the second one. Here's the third one. This is the one I think is going to win. <sighs> yeah. Look at that turquoise door. What a, what a choice. That is just a choice. Now, here are the, uh, the semifinals of the day lined up. What they have here is the painting that they did for their, um, to be selected on the program is on the left, and the one that they did today is on the right. So we're going to get a closer up view of the paintings in just one second. And that's going to give us a chance to look at their styles and their consistency. So this is the woman that did the grasses. Remember, we saw that. So she's capable of doing very close up and detailed work, as well as a, a distant view of the landscape. Extremely graphic. I would be very surprised if the, you know, this would meet the criterion for the commission. Not that that wouldn't get her into the semifinals. We've seen that plenty of times. So it, it could be any one of these three. Here's the next one up. Yeah, that really industrial bridge. And in, in this particular, a picture on the left. You can see a little bit the landscape that she put in at the very, very bottom. It's very nicely designed. I think what happened on the right is she just didn't have time. She needed more time to resolve things. But what she's got there is really great. And she's she's going to be judged on what she did today, not on what she didn't do. The judges understand how the time constraints of this, of course. All right. You know, I love this. Love this. Love this. Love this. Um, I love the entry. And I love what he did today. And my gosh, I would have switched them around. I would have thought the one that he did today was the one on the left. Doesn't it? How in the world did he get all that done in time? But he did. So now we get to the winner. The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. I'm really excited about the winner because I want to see more from him. I just think he is something else. Yes, our winner is this guy. Oh. I love that work. I just love it. And he changed the format, but boy, can he push. He pushes color without it reading as, as not realistic. And yet he's got some, you know, if he were to isolate some of those colors, you'd say, wait a minute, that, that doesn't make any sense. But that's, that's a good use of color value swap out. Beautiful. All right, so remember to keep the whites your paper white, your paint sweat, mass for value, mix for color. See you next time. Bye-bye.